boys and girls. Welcome back to another Kids Sunday video. I'm Miss Christina. I'm so glad you joined us today. I wanted to show you guys something super special I found in my house. This is a special treasure box. Have you guys ever searched for treasure and found it? Wow. I haven't found treasure in the ground. This was just in my home. And I'm wondering what's inside because I don't know. Do you guys have a treasure box at home? Do you save and keep all your secret treasures in there? Well, I didn't open it yet, but I'm excited to open it with you guys to see what's inside because I love treasure. Okay, let's do it. Whoa, there's so much in here. I know you can't see yet, but look, the first thing I see is a crown. Wow, okay. I love crowns as a treasure. And guess what? There's beautiful jewelry too. Jewelry can be a treasure for sure. I love jewelry. Hmm, okay. And I love coins. Look, I have coins. Wow, all these coins. And there's jewels. This one is so pretty, guys. Look. There's jewels in this treasure box. I can't believe it. Look at all these treasures. Guess what, guys? There's even something more exciting than crowns and jewelry and money and jewels. This is the most exciting treasure of all. Let me get it out to show you. It's, oh, it's stuck in there. Let me try it. Look, it's God's Word. It's a Bible. Bible is the most amazing treasure of all. And this one is very fancy. It looks brand new. I'm excited. I've never had a new Bible like this. Hmm. Well, all these treasures are really cool. I would say the Bible is the most important treasure out of all these things. So it's kind of cool to have treasures, don't you think? Yeah, it's kind of cool to have crowns. And of course, we need money for things like food and clothes. And jewels are pretty when you put them on. But God's word is the most important treasure that we could ever find. And I hope that you're going to listen and pay attention today because we're going to learn a new story from God's word. So we've been talking about how Jesus is a miracle maker. And now we're gonna talk about how Jesus is our savior. We're right here, boop. It's called kingdom parables. So, do you guys know what a parable is? Hmm. A parable is a fancy word for story. Parables are stories that use God's imagination to tell us something really important. And Jesus often used parables to tell us some big, important things that he wanted us to know. So sometimes he uses stories to help explain his big idea. And um, parables are something that are all over in our Bible. So we're gonna be learning about stories today that are called parables. And we're gonna be learning a new big picture question. So before we learn our big picture question, I need our question mark, let me get it. Ready? There it is. All right. Our new big picture question says, how does God care for his creation? Hmm. How does God care for his creation? Do you think God cares for creation by getting out a broom and sweeping up the floor? Sweep, 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 sweep. Oh my gosh. That would be amazing if he came to my house every day and swept my floor then I wouldn't have to vacuum. <laughs> but you know, I don't think God takes care of creation by sweeping the floor. God takes care of creation because he loves us and he rules over his creation because his plans are perfect. And that's how he takes care of creation, by ruling over us and all of the beautiful things that he made. In our story today, we're gonna to learn about a special treasure 
that God wants us to know, and it's about his kingdom and how his kingdom can grow and grow and grow only if you tell others and if you accept him in your heart, you can be a part of God's kingdom and part of all of the growing. So I hope that you guys are going to pay attention and put your listening ears on. Let me get mine. Ready? Boop. Okay, I have on my listening ears because our Bible story is next. One day, Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Large crowds of people gathered around him, so he got into a boat and sat down. All the people stood on the shore. Then Jesus told the people parables, or stories, to teach them about the kingdom of God. Jesus' disciples asked him, Why do you teach in parables? Jesus answered, not everyone will understand the hidden truths about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus reminded them about some of the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Some people look, but they do not see. Hmm. They hear, but they do not listen or understand. Oh. Jesus made these prophecies come true. Jesus said, you are blessed because you do understand. Jesus told a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it grows taller than the garden plants. It becomes a tree and the birds come and build nests in the branches. Jesus continued, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that a woman mixed into 50 pounds of flour. The leaven makes the dough rise. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field that a man found. He reburied it, and then he joyfully sold everything he had and bought that field. Then Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine oh. pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. When Jesus finished teaching the crowds, he left that place and went to Nazareth. The kingdom of God is growing in the world. The kingdom is valuable and worth giving everything for. While we wait for Jesus to return and fully set up his kingdom, we carry out the mission of telling others about King Jesus who rescues sinners. Hey guys, what did you think about today's Bible story? There was a lot of things in there, wasn't it? There was um, stories called parables. Remember parable is a word that we use to describe small stories. And our stories are about God's kingdom and how God's kingdom was growing. Um, so if you remember, there were stories about mustard seeds, which I'll come back to in a little bit. And there were stories about leaven and bread, which is um, yeast, which is something that we use when making bread to make it rise so that it's all yummy and fluffy when we eat it. Um, he also told a story about a man in a field with treasure. Do you guys remember that one? Where he was working in a field and found treasure and then gave up everything he owned just to get the field because he knew how valuable that treasure was. And so these stories, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what they mean. So the one with the treasure in the field, um, it's sort of supposed to mean like when we follow Jesus, Jesus is the most valuable treasure we could ever have. He is the, the most amazing gift that we could ever have and treasure. And so we should be willing to give up everything to follow Jesus. We should give up our sinful lives um, and all the things that we did before we knew Jesus um, that were harmful to us. And so we give up everything to follow Jesus sometimes. And just like the man sold everything because he knew that the treasure was valuable, we can give our whole lives to Jesus because we know that that is really valuable. 
Um, so I also wanted to take a minute to talk to you guys a little bit about the mustard seed. So I came to this spot to talk to you about our Bible story today because I like to sit in this spot. Um, it's out right uh, where my backyard is. I get to look at all the trees and I have a bird feeder over here and the birds come. Um, and in our story we talked about a mustard seed. Well, a few years ago, a friend of mine gave me a real mustard seed. I wanted to show it to you guys. Okay, and I actually do keep it right over here on my shelf. It comes in this teeny tiny jar. Do you see it? So, I'll put my hand up so you can see. Let me hold it still. There, do you see how small that little mustard seed is? This is my finger, look. It is a teeny tiny mustard seed. And I keep this little mustard seed here on my shelf um, because it reminds me, in our story about the mustard seed, reminds me that a little bit of faith can um, be amazing. It can grow to lots and lots and lots of things. Just like that tiny little mustard seed can grow into a giant tree like these ones out here in my backyard. Um, God can use our little bit of faith that we have in our hearts and it can grow and grow and grow. That's how God's kingdom is. Every time that we um, use our faith in a way that trusts God and um, sometimes when we use our faith and we share it with others, that's like our God's kingdom growing. Um, just like the mustard seed grows into this big, big tree and birds can come and perch in it. Um, our faith can grow into something amazing. And just like other believers around us are growing, we can grow too. And God's kingdom will always be growing if we share our faith with others. So I encourage you guys this week to think about somebody that you have to, um, haven't shared Jesus with yet. And you can share your faith with others and grow like a tree or like the dough. Um, in our story and we can share our faith with others and we can grow God's kingdom. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our Bible story today. We're going to have um, help from our friend Tina. We haven't seen Tina in a while, but she's going to help us today with our memory verse. Have fun! Hi boys and girls, I'm so glad that I get to do the memory verse with you again. We're learning a new memory verse this week. It's from Colossians 1, 13. It says, He, meaning God, He has rescued us, go like this with your hand, and from the domain, we go like this with the other hand, of darkness. You wave your arms out and transferred us, put your hand like this again, into the kingdom of the Son He loves
Hey guys, it's time to do a craft. So this week uh, we're going to do a craft that is a treasure box. Um, we're doing a treasure box to remind us of our stories that um, we learned today. The parables about how God's kingdom is um, the most valuable treasure that we could ever know. So things that we're going to need for our craft are the printy, the printout that looks like this uh, from our email we send out. And you're going to need something to color it with, so markers or crayons. I use markers. And we're going to need some scissors. And then we need either glue or tape. And um, this, this craft I actually used tape because it seemed easier than the glue. So what you're going to have to do first is either color it at the beginning or you can color it at the end, either way. But I colored mine at the beginning. Um, and then when I was done coloring, I took my scissors. And if you look at the black line on the outside, you cut out the shape um, all the way on the outside edge of the black line. So once you do that, this is what it looks like. It looks like this piece of paper with lots of parts and things you need. And so this is going to be a little tricky. This is a little tricky craft, so you probably will need help from an adult. Uh, but there's some steps that we're going to do to uh, put it together to make it look like this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold, after you cut it out, you're going to fold all of the places that have the dotted lines. So there's lots of folding. So you fold all of those places and once you're done folding them then you can start assembling the box. Okay. So after you fold all of the lines, we're going to look for the number one. This is where you might need help from a, a, from a parent. So right here, there's a tiny number one, and it's on the very bottom of this long section. And after you fold it, if you put it like this, like a box, see? Number one should go on the inside. So I used, like I said, I used tape. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to use tape to put it right on the edge. There's my number one. I'm going to put it right on the edge and cover it so that it makes the bottom of our box. Okay? The next step is tricky too. So there's some other numbers on here. We're going to now put together the treasure section. So the treasure section, you have to put it down like this, okay? Like a little bench or chair. See? And these little sides, we have to tuck in. So the number nine matches up with the other number nine. You match those up, and the number seven matches up with the number eight. I'm not really sure why they did that, but that's what it says on the paper. So you have to tape those down. So after you fold them together like this, you tape them down so that the number seven and the number eight are together and the number nine and the number nine are together. So after you tape those two down, your box should look like this. Now we just have to do the top. So to do the top, this is a little tricky too. <laughs> these are all very tricky. You put this like this so that these two circles are closing the treasure, the treasure's underneath. And then you take this part and see the little flap on top? You fold it over so that it will tape against number 10 and number 11. So you fold it over, 10 and 11, and you put a piece of tape right on top. Just like, oh, just like that. Okay? So then, when you have that part done, you can make the sides. See? And then you'll have to tape the sides on too. So I think the easiest way to tape the sides 
this part is if you put a little piece of tape on number two and number four but you have to put a piece of tape so it's like super sticky so to do that you flip the tape around like this do you guys ever do that you flip it around so it's like all the way around and it's sticky and you put the tape on the numbers just like this and you fold it over so it stays see then you'll have your treasure box fully complete and um, this is a little bit complicated but um, it's actually a cool craft because it looks like a treasure box see and inside you can see that there's things that represent treasure like gold and gems but if you remember the beginning of our video I talked about the most amazing treasure of all and that is God's Word and um, we also learned about our stories today that if we talk about God's Word or talk about um, Jesus with others it grows and grows and grows God's kingdom grows just like a, a little tiny seed like the tree so I hope that you can find a friend this week that you can tell Jesus about so that God's kingdom can keep growing. And um, our treasure box, you can put it somewhere special. And maybe if you use it like a real treasure box, you can hide some stuff underneath. Because look, it's hollow. So underneath you can put a secret treasure and no one will know. Um, but I hope you guys uh, had a great uh, time learning our Bible story today. I'm going to say a prayer before we go and then we're going to um, say goodbye. Okay? Our hands we fold, our heads we bow, so we can talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for these stories that teach us about your kingdom. I pray that um, we will learn more about you and we will help others to learn more about you. I just thank you for today and for the time we spent together learning about you. We love you, God. Amen. All right, guys. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.